Right. Of course. This what's the name of school? Hillview. 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 Uh, middle school. Yes. Uh, training for the our ADA stage lift. Um, first thing to point out is this uh, is our our log book that needs to stay here on site with the lift. Uh, best store either in your administrative office and or at a very adjacent room that's locked. This needs to be accessible for weekly inspections by on-site personnel and also has to be uh, available for any service technicians that come out and do any service work on the lift. Uh, the requirement of the weekly is a weekly inspection, so we may have to make an entry in the first section of this logbook. This is for on-site personnel, whoever is responsible for the lift. And basically the minimum requirements is you got to cycle it. You know, go up, go down, open the door, close the door, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the requirements is just basically initial and date it. If there's any comments, enter a comment. If there's if it operates normally, then just initial and date. And again, that needs to be maintained weekly, all year round. So if schools shut down, and you want to take it out of service, you have to. You're supposed to, to contact the state saying you're taking it out of service. Otherwise, you're supposed to still do it all summer long. Uh, the second section is for uh, is for service technicians, whether for malfunctions for uh, repair service or for uh, our uh, um, twice a year minimum requirement for routine maintenance. And so that's the district is responsible to, just like the elevators, to get somebody on board to do minimum twice a year on, on, on this particular lift. Uh, there's other more content in, inside this book that's required by the state. There's actually a code section here that we have copies of that, that describes all these things I'm explaining today as far as the state code goes is what the responsibility of the owner is uh, as far as inspect weekly inspections and, and, and uh, six month uh, routine maintenance requirements. In addition to owner's manuals, schematics, basically everything you would need to know about this lift. Okay. All right, Oper operational lift. First thing we like to point out is how to turn the lift on or off. Um, right here is our fuse lockable disconnect. Well, the first thing I'm going to point out, I'm going to suggest or, or require, is that this is a, um, a lockable disconnect. It's on. It's in the on, currently in the on position. This is shutting it off. When it is off, you can't open the door. And in fact, that we are in a school of kids, uh, there's 110 volts behind the box, so that's exposed right now. So what we want you to do is put a school standard lock on here. We don't want to put our lock on it because then you can't get it open. So the school, like a like a school standard padlock, that most of the personnel might have or custodian staff or whatever that's what we suggest you put on the access door so that's what you want to put a lock on not here this is the on off lock which should remain in the on position unless somebody's servicing it notice this the automatic door just cycled when it when power is restored. Um, this particular landing has a power gate operator mounted here. And the reason why it has a power gate operator here is because we do not have 18 inches on our clear strike side. So the, the reason why we add those is whenever we don't have strike side clearance. Uh, one of the things that it's nice, it's a nice feature, however, you have to wait for it to cycle. So you can't, you, you, the lift will not move until the unit's actually fully closed. So a lot of times people aren't, aren't patient enough to wait for it. <coughs> As all the public school lifts that we do in the state of California, it's a key lift, um, so it takes a key to operate. This is an industry standard key that works for any wheelchair lift that you, if you have one on site right now, and it has a key, this would be the identical key. Same key would operate. It's for the last 20 years or so, we've been using this key. I uh, put it in the cylinder, um, turn, turn it clockwise, and now I've basically turned on this particular switch. I did not turn on the entire lift, I just now enabled this switch. Toggle controls, constant pressure operation, I press, it moves, I let go, it stops. Uh, it'll stop on its own once, once it reaches the upper limit. And once it arrives at the top landing, the door is mechanically released and unlocked. Uh, same thing goes for down here. That's one, one, one. Press and hold. Once it comes down, I'll, I'll point this out right now. Uh, right here, this pin right here is the actual interlock uh, release mechanism. 
So what happens is the elbow as it lifts comes down to the ground. This pin is pushed up, which releases the interlock. So right now I could open the gate. If it's not fully closed, it won't move, but that's how the interlock mechanism works. The bottom landing is a similar release at the on the gate post up there for the top. Landing. Every time it comes into a landing, it's gonna go ahead and go through this cycle. Any questions so far? The operation for this lift is identical to your, your existing one. I'm sure. It's a constant pressure. It's either probably has a pile control and it's going to work this thing. The only difference is probably this has a proper disconnect and it has this power operator. Uh, the one thing I would comment about what this one compared to what the other unit probably is, this is a uh, hydraulic drive unit. So um, it's uh, a hydraulic pump operates it in the up direction and down gravity does all the work in the down direction. Alright, you want to, would you like to run it and see if it cycles? Okay. Alright, so that goes for basic operation. We talked about the disconnect, so now really what to talk about is um, emergency operation. Um, you may note that there's a hands free phone up on the one touch button phone on the platform, so if there's ever a problem with well, someone in the lift, they're supposed to push that once and it should automatically dial. A outside service. Currently, it's set up for our our company's answering service. Uh, that was the minimum we needed to do to pass our state inspection to get this permit. Uh, however, that subject we suggest that that gets reprogrammed at some point to whoever's going to be signed up for the ongoing maintenance and for somebody probably either the district or front office or something like that because. If we get a service call off hours weekends and we don't have a key to the door, we can't help anybody. So, it does, so you really need to be able to call somebody who has access to, to the building. That's, that's, so that's reprogrammable quite easily, quite frankly, and all you got to do is dial into that number and the procedures for reprogramming that number are right here in the last section of this, uh, this book here. So the, the programming procedures are right in here. It's real simple. Just call in. Play with volume control and everything else. And if you need help with that, we're happy to help. I just, we didn't know the numbers to program. Um, okay, uh, emergency procedures. I'm going to run the lift up. The only reason you would be doing these emergency procedures would be if somebody was stuck on the lift. So right now, I have essentially shut the lift off so as if some, the lift is now won't operate. I press controls, keys are on, nothing's going to happen. Um, so if I needed to manually lower, that requires, probably doesn't require a full screwdriver. If you never tighten the screws tight. And this is something I usually uh, want the person I'm training. Can you see that cover? Zoom in on it. The, the instructions are on the cover. So basically, remove the cover. Uh, usually, what we do is we, we try not to tighten those. So you can basically use your fingernail to open up. I'm pretty confident somewhere on campus you guys have a screwdriver in case it was too tight uh, to open it. But the procedure is remove the screws. You don't have to take them both out, you can see them move on. And that exposed this knob that's referred to on the front cover of the label. Uh, works kind of, it's a cable linkage that pulls on our down valve, so it mechanically uh, releases. And what it basically does is it pulls on our down valve. Oils, oils release and the lift comes out. So basically, I pull, and I'm bringing the elevator down manually. Now, when we're bringing down manly, there's no safeties involved, so we definitely don't want any feet or anything like that. That's the reason why I said the only reason to do this is in case of somebody stuck on the elevator. So if you notice, you basically pull it down. It basically comes far enough down, a minute, a little bit more. And, excuse me. Basically, it lifts completely off, and I just manually drop the elevator, get it down to the bottom landing here, and, and the interlock release. So once the, once the lift is all the way down, it's mechanically released. So again, 
Only reason to do this is in case somebody's stuck on the other. Shouldn't really happen. So. Alright, I want to point out a couple other things. Restore power here. Wanted to open, it's hanging up on that because I went down a little, a little farther than it needed to go. That's, that's lower than it normally be. Uh, and this in schools like this, where um, the lift is a relatively an open lift, we refer to this as an open lift, but it's not fully enclosed in the shaft. Uh, I'm not sure if you have this one, the other lift, but we have a mechanics pit switch, so any. Mechanic servicing this lift that they had to get underneath it. That's a safety switch that we would engage before we get under there. Um, occasionally, kids like to, when they're hanging out, they like to push that in. So if you came, if you push that in, you basically disable the lift. It won't run. So right now, the control is not work. That's one of the basic weekly things we like to check. If it, if it doesn't work, the, one of the first things we like to do to check the, uh, is to make sure that the power's on and make sure that you have, nobody's pushed the switch in. To reset it, it's just a quick quarter turn clockwise to release that and we're up and going. Uh, one of the common concerns with fishing in schools about these open lifts is about you know a, a crushing hazard per se uh, when, when it's open. So what we have here is we have a floating pan throughout the entire perimeter of this platform. There's a pan that's monitored by six switches. So if it comes down anywhere it will stop from going down. Uh, what it'll do is it'll stop it in the down direction, but it will not stop on the up. So it won't go down, but it will go up. So we actually I was doing a demonstration and we actually had somebody put a uh, soda can, empty soda can underneath the lift and it stopped when the can didn't even crush it. So. Uh, let's see, on the platform, probably the last safety to talk about other than the pan, the door has got to be closed all the way for it to run. The cycle. On the platform itself, there's an emergency stop switch that's required by our elevator code. Uh, if you engage it, it's very obvious because it illuminates and the alarm goes off. And that's just to you both pull out in case you accidentally hit it in. And that's pretty much it. Any questions?